Well, the news of the day is Thomas Edward Patrick Brady is currently operating under the belief that he will enter free agency to play somewhere other than New England next season. The sentiment the quarterback has shared with others, that sentiment the quarterback has shared with others, per ESPN's Jeff Darlington. And while Brady, again, this is from an ESPN report, has uh, has eyes very clearly on free agency, there is still belief in his circles that the Patriots will have their opportunity to convince Brady to stay. But at this point, Brady is evaluating the NFL landscape with the intention of departing, sources said. So the question becomes, do you believe it? Will Tom Brady walk out that door? Will he walk out that door? And the answer is, I don't believe he wants to. And when you don't want to, you usually don't. There's a, there's a litany of reasons why I don't think he's leaving. The first is that Tom Brady doesn't have to make a decision based upon money. Do I think he wants to be paid more money for more years? Yes, because money in this instance and in professional sports, a lot of times equates to respect. He wants some respect. But you're not going to make a decision over money. Smart people don't make decisions based upon that bottom line. Especially smart, super, 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 super rich people. You make smart decisions because it's the right decision. Now, Maybe one of these teams become a better working environment for him. Maybe he thinks they have a better chance of winning. Maybe he needs a change in his life of where he's living and he doesn't want to play and live in the cold in New England. All of that. But the idea of making the decision because of money strikes me as a non-Tom Brady type decision, right? He doesn't have to. He doesn't need to. It's simply about respect, but you can get respect other ways other than just money. Is it about winning? I'm not sure if you thought the Patriots were any good this year. They still won 12 games. Which, by the way, all of these teams that are being considered, Tampa, the Chargers, the Raiders, even the Titans who beat New England in New England, did not win 12 games this season. So we can sit here and talk about how bad his weapons were, forgetting the fact they had Antonio Brown and Josh Gordon and had a jettison both. But the fact is that Tom Brady's brand is not just about longevity, it's about longevity of success. And if it's about feelings, which feels like that's what this is about, You don't announce to the world, I'm leaving. I swear I'm leaving. I'm walking out this door. Unless you want somebody to come running back to you. When people want your attention, when people want the attention of their bosses, they announce that they're leaving. Right? Like, when I go to a party, when I go to a party, the, what is it called? The Italian exit, right? Is that what it's called? Where you just dip out the back? That's what I do. I do the Italian exit. Like, I don't want, I hate that side face kiss thing. Oh, it's so good to see you. I hate, I despise that side kiss thing. It wasn't, like, look, if we, if we haven't talked leading up to the party, if we didn't talk during the party, it sure as hell wasn't that great that I had to say goodbye to you. Like, I'm out. But people that want attention stop along the way and say goodbye. Hey, I'm leaving. Hi, everybody. I'm leaving. Hey, Jim, I just wanted to say great party. Uh, The hummus was amazing. Do you go hummus or do you go hummus? What do you do? Uh, It's incredible. Did your wife make that? No, it's Sabra. Oh, it's fantastic. And they say goodbye to everybody when they're walking walking out the door. People that want attention, don't leave. Right? They say I'm leaving. Tom Brady, hey, he's out. Hey, he's leaving. No, no, he's leaving. No, no, this time he's leaving. You have to up operate under the assumption that Tom Brady is going to make a decision based upon money, which he does not need, and based upon some sort of feeling factor because if it's about wins and losses, he won more in New England without good players around him. You can't tell me it's a smart decision for Brady to leave the Patriots. There's not an offense coordinator he's worked with. 
there's not a locked up cinch team that's a better team than the Patriots, nor in as bad a division as the Patriots are in. Nor will he play for as good a coach or have the relationship he has with Josh McDaniels. And whatever nominal amount he'll make more in money, he's made so much the decision shouldn't be about money. I listen to him say, I'm leaving. I'm walking out. Hey, who's going to come drag me back in? That's Brady saying he doesn't want to go. Otherwise, there would be no leak story. It would just happen, and it would be done, and we'd be left to pick up the pieces. Rock in a hard place. Where does that come from? I'm always interested in these sayings, right? Rock in a hard place. But that, I believe, is where Jerry Jones is right now. Between a rock and a hard place. See, Calvin Watkins has been a tight end reporter for the Dallas Morning News for years. Uh, he gave us these kind of three fun facts that the Cowboys met with Dak and his agent on Wednesday. The Cowboys have offered a deal worth $33 million a year guaranteed uh, per year, plus over $100 million in guarantees. Cowboys officials would like Dak to pick up the phone and call. Right? Tell us where you are. And Dak, well, Dak's doing what his agent has told him to do. Lay low. Stay out of it. Let us negotiate. And I think Dak's doing it a pretty good job of getting the most money he can get. But is that making the Dallas Cowboys better? And is it getting the deal done? I think Jerry, in his heart of hearts, would love to get Tom Brady. Love. Love. Um... But in order to get Tom Brady, he has to jettison Dak Prescott. In order to get to to Tagovailoa, he has to jettison Dak Prescott. And while he'll be overpaying Dak Prescott because he underpaid him previously, that's exactly what he'd be doing if it was Tom Brady, right? The Cowboys brand doesn't need any help in terms of promotion. You're 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 paying Tom Brady because you think – that solidifies yourself as a Super Bowl team when you have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. But Tom Brady, truth be told, is not worth 30 or 35 a year on the open market simply on skill set alone. The truth is, though, neither is Dak Prescott. Right, Dak's only worth that much because he's up for a contract, because he is a cowboy, and because they've underpaid him previously. Would he like for Dak? Would he like to find a way to move Dak and get a better quarterback? Maybe. But that's really ugly, and that goes counter to what Jerry's always done in terms of taking care of his own. And as much as he doesn't want to overpay Dak, you'd have to overpay Tom Brady just to get Tom Brady. And you'd have to jettison Dak in order to do so. Right? That whole thing is a dog and pony show, and it's really hard. Rock and a hard place. Look, my, the guess is pretty simple that ultimately this gets done. You get to 33, and you're like, ah, You know, any negotiation anyone's ever been a part of, you get worn down by it and ultimately you just go like, well, look, if you're at 33, why not get to 34? If you're at 34, why not get to 35? If you're at 35, let's get this done for 36. And Jerry's people and Stephen Jones are like, well, you're at 33 and we're at, you know, you're at 36 and we're at 33. If you just come down a couple million dollars, you get this done, you're still at $100 million in guarantees. And I know that we're in this, well, you know, because they waited, it somehow should be more money. But the reality to that is it doesn't have to be more money. It doesn't. Everybody can be happy. Dak Prescott can get generational wealth, life-changing wealth. All he has to do is agree to a deal. But in order for Jerry Jones to really, really present some leverage, he has to offer up the possibility that there are other quarterbacks out there. And to this point, he has not. We always say the next guy has got to get paid. Russell Wilson makes 35 a year. No one thinks that Dak Prescott is as good or as, uh, as dependable can do as much with as little as what Russell Wilson does. Right. I don't care if the cap's going up. I don't care if it's always been done where the next guy gets more money. That's not actually the way it's worked. It actually hasn't. Kirk Cousins did not break the bank. Kirk Cousins got a three-year completely guaranteed deal. He doesn't make $30 million, nor should he make $30 million. It's like three for 86, I believe, was, was the number. 
So there's ways to cleverly make this so that Dak can get some sort of win, but you don't massively overpay Dak. And there's the rock in the hard place for Jerry Jones, and Jerry has done this to himself. Once you get to 33, you're not coming down from 33. You're not going to the 20s, as uh, Emmett Smith said. You're not going to the early third. Like once you get, that's that's the uh, another part of negotiating 101. Once you come to a number, you're not going back down. That's why when you list that, you list a house, you always list it a little bit more than you want to get for it, right? You always, and then when you when you start get, getting back and forth and haggling over how much you want to sell your house for, don't come down to a number that you're not ultimately willing to settle on because you're not going back up. No one goes back and house is on the market for $150,000. You're in negotiation. You get down to 125 and you're like, well, what about 135? Like, no, dude, once you get to 125, we're not going back down. And he's also known for giving in. Was it Austin Powers 2 or Austin Powers 3 that once you got to the third clever line, he gave in, right? That's that. That's who. That's who Jerry is. Everyone knows Jerry gives in to his players. You know, it's like the guy who you're you're playing cards with, poker with. Everyone knows when he's bluffing. Jimmy's bluffing. How do you know? Look at him. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like sweating. His eye is twitching. He keeps looking at his cell phone. His hands are shaking. But he's just gone all in on a hand. And when he had cards previously, he didn't do that. Like, everyone knows when Jimmy is bluffing. Everyone knows that Jerry is giving in. Does anybody think that Jerry Jones is drawing a hard and fast stance and He's absolutely not paying Dak Prescott a penny more than $30 million. Of course not. Dak knows it. He knows it. Steven knows it. They did the good cop, bad cop thing with Zeke. Even when Jerry was joking and said, Zeke who? After a preseason game, then he started backpedaling immediately. Like, you're the owner of the Cowboys. You're worth billions of billions of dollars. You bought the thing for a couple hundred million. Now it's worth five billion. You're, you're, you got house money, dude. You won three Super Bowls. You might get to another one. You might not. But he should have a little bit more confidence in this negotiation than he actually does. The problem is that we know that Jerry always gives in. You know, he could look Dak Prescott square in the face and say, hey, I can go get Tom Brady. That's the I'm going to turn this car around, parent. I'm going to turn this car around. I'm going to turn this car around. You will not have ice cream the rest of the week. And then the next day they're having ice cream. That's Jerry Jones. He's not a bad parent. He's just a parent that always gives in. And when he's the one who, by his own mission, writes the checks, it doesn't really matter what Steven says. It doesn't really matter what the rest of their brain trust says because at the end of the day, owners own. And he's the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. And he gives in. That's the deal. That's the deal. So they met with his agent on Wednesday. They've offered him $33 million a year. That offer hasn't gone up since early in the year. It's $100 million in guarantee. It's a, it's a deal that's plenty good enough. Plenty good enough to get to be done. But Dak won't pick up the phone because Dak, well, Dak doesn't have, a, he doesn't have an established uh, MO in terms of negotiating. Dak hasn't negotiated before. He's not Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, we got a scouting report on him. Acts tough, talks tough, and then ultimately gives in. Did so to Emmett. Did so to Zeke. Will do so to Dak. Just does. Would rather be liked by those guys than respected by those guys. There's guys. They're his stars. And stars want to be around. And owners want to be around other stars. It's one of the big reasons that owners buy a football team. They don't always buy a football team to make money. Many times they, they don't even plan on making money. That's an ancillary benefit of it. They buy these teams because they want to be around stars. And the best way to be around a star is to make that star happy. And the best way to make them happy is to give in to their every whim and give them all the greatest facilities and all, all the money you possibly can. 
And that's what Jerry's going to do. He's at 33. He'll end up at 35 because he's Jerry Jones. Hey, what up? Doug Gottlieb here. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Fox Sports Radio. You can catch my show, all the shows on Fox Sports Radio, unique interviews, strong takes, uh, just interesting discussion on the sports topic of the day, of the week, of the month. It's all encompassing. It's everything you need right here on YouTube. Subscribe.